Hi guys, this video is gonna help you guys kind of envision or see how you can use pinch pots to help sculpt or make your project. So I'm starting off by prepping my clay. This should happen really any time before you touch clay. You wanna wedge out your clay and make sure that it's all one even consistency. So once I've wedged it out, I'm cutting the block of clay in half um, to just make sure I get two even pieces of clay since I'm slipping and scoring two pinch pots together. It also shows if there's any air bubbles as well. So making the pinch pots, hopefully this is familiar to you. I have two balls of clay that are hopefully the same size. Get them as same in size as you can. It will help you in the long run. So I'm just doing my normal pinching, blending with my fingers, smoothing everything out. Now one thing that will be new is shaping the clay by patting it with a paddle or some sort of flat surface. So here you see me have a paddle. And what I do is I'm going to be getting rid of those finger indentations just by patting this flat surface on the edge of the clay. And take note that I'm just really tapping or patting. It's I'm not really going in with full force here. Uh, you would definitely dent some walls up by doing that. But you're able to really get a really smooth wall by doing this. So definitely recommend trying it out if you haven't before. So once I have my first pinch pot, I need to make my second pinch pot. Um, for this, you want to just check every once in a while while you're making your pinch pot that the two pinch pots will line up. This is so important because I can't tell you how many times I've had a student work on a pinch pot for, you know, 30 minutes and then they go to check if it lines up and it doesn't line up because one is like about an inch bigger than the other and it just, it doesn't end up working out and they have to make a whole new pinch pot which isn't the end of the world, but you could avoid wasted time by checking like that. Next is slipping and scoring the pinch pots together and blending out the seams. So here you can find me slipping and scoring each wall of the pinch pot that will touch the other part of the clay. And then once I've slipped and scored, I press them together very firmly, as firmly as I can. Try to really get any air bubbles out of that seam and make sure that it is nice and airtight. So once I have it like this, I recommend letting it sit. Letting it dry up for a little while just because if you try to go in at it right away, it's going to be... Just a little bit annoying with trying to shape it and trying to blend out that seam. So let it sit for 5, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, so there's a couple ways you can blend out your seam. The first way is just by putting a small coil on that seam and blending it out thoroughly. So I'll show you how I do that here. And I'm just going to do it for a section of the pinch pot. So I'm slipping and squaring both sides. I find that scoring up the seam really does help with blending it out too, so I don't really shy away from it here. And then you can see me just blending the coil into the side of that wall. So that's one way that you can do it. And take notice, by the way, that I'm kind of switching between a vertical and a horizontal blend, like with the seam against the seam. The second approach is I just get a piece of clay and I pop it in there. Um, a little bit of slip and score, very minimal, um, but that's not the main thing. It's, it's just that it's not a coil. I'm just getting little pieces of clay. This third and final approach that you see me doing here is I'm just simply trying to blend the clay out with my fingers. Uh, so that, those were the three. Uh, the first was the coil. The second was just grabbing little pieces of clay, and the third is just trying to blend it. Out of those three, and now I'm shaping it with a paddle. Out of those three, I don't really have a preference. Um, I noticed that just blending it with my fingers, that the crack showed up more often um, while I was continuing to make the project, so it became a little bit more of a hassle. 
Um, so I would lean towards the coil or the just stuff in the clay in there. So now you see me shaping it and patting it, getting the shape I want. I can use a paddle or my hands. And I just wanted to show you guys the shape. You can kind of see the seam forming there. I just wanted to show you, you guys can shape this into something more oval. It doesn't just have to be a, a full-on circle, right? You could do an oval. You could really shape it however you want. Um, it could be a heart shape. You know, it could. you could make it take on any form. Um, you know, obviously nothing too complex, but yeah, you're able to shape it just by patting it. One thing that's important here is that this is like a, just a, a hollow ball of clay. If I was to poke a hole and then try to pat the clay and shape it, it wouldn't shape as well because when I hit it, the air on the inside would kind of flow out the bottom of this kind of needle hole that I'm making right now. So I like to keep the pinch pots kind of closed up when I'm shaping it and then I make the hole for the air to escape. So this last part I want to show you guys that I'm making an additional pinch pot for my head. Um, one thing to take note of is this pinch pot wouldn't be a normal pinch pot that I would make. I'd have to shape it a little differently for it to look natural. So um, one thing that I noticed is that I needed to make my walls just a little bit longer to make it look more like a head and a neck rather than um, whatever that was because that didn't even look like a head. Um, so one thing that I kind of showed there is that I'm angling my hand inward so um, my thumb's kind of pushing out on the inside of the clay kind of getting that rounded form but my four fingers are angling the clay inwards. So what I'm trying to do there is I'm trying to make the opening of that pinch pot as narrow as I can. So at this point I was wanting to just shape it a little bit more so I think I end up just pinching it with my fingers and uh, the neck area with my fingers and trying to make it a little bit more pronounced of a head and neck rather than just a kind of head. You can see me patting it to try to get rid of the, what's it called? The finger indentations. And I will start shaping the neck right now. <laughs> So once I have it on, I kind of find the way that I like it. I have that little gap right there because I want it to, I want the head to be angled up in that way that you're seeing it, right? So I know I'm going to have to kind of stick some clay in there and fill in that gap. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I'm going to center my head, make sure it's centered on top, looks good from the side. I'm going to outline where I'm going to add on this pinch pot and then I'm going to score it all up okay I haven't added on slip yet because I'm gonna go ahead and handle the airflow right now so what you have to consider is that if you have this hollow pinch pot on top of a closed off area you would need a hole for the air to escape so what I like to do is I like to have all the air escaping through one hole on the bottom of my project so it's one continuous, like, cavity, I guess, of air. And then once I have that hole, I just slip and score the head on. Like I said, I do have some room down at the bottom of that neck um, where I'm going to have to fill that in with just, like, a kind of coil molded just piece of clay. So this is a little difficult because I had to have one hand always holding up and supporting the head because um, it wasn't able to su support itself without the support of the bottom. 
part of the head touching the actual body of the duck. So I'm just blending it out and then in a second here you'll see me deal with that kind of neck issue. So you see that gap, I need to fill it in. So I get a coil, I cut it to size, and I slip and score it on and blend it. Um, so one thing that I like to do too is um, the hole that I have that's on that body, kind of leading from the head into the body, that hole is a little bit large, and I like to keep both of the holes that I have on this pinch pot right now or this project large because I like to go in to the project and I like to smooth out any of those seams. So this coil on the inside would, it, it really just feels like a mess. So I like knowing that my project is solid all the way around and it's all just one solid piece of clay. So you can see my finger kind of poking through. Um, but um, that's the way I go about it. I just smooth it out from the inside as well as the outside. That's up to you guys. Uh, we're not going to see the inside, but it does secure the project a little bit better. So that's really it. I slipped and squared it on, and there's my head for my duck. Uh, so I hope this helps you guys if you needed this. Uh, thank you for watching, and good luck on getting started with your projects.